So thank you, Matt, for speaking to uh, Security Review and Arabian Reseller. Uh, Matt is from uh, NetApp, and we'll talk about technologies and sustainability in uh, in today's world. Uh, so th thank you, Matt, once again for speaking to us today. It's a pleasure, Chris. Nice to be here. Cool. So we'll start with a uh, with a question, which is probably one of one of the questions that you might hear from a lot of people. Can sustainability and technology truly go together? So it's a great question, and I think they have to, Chris. I think if we look at kind of where we are today, um, the ICT in general consumed about 2% of the world's electricity. Um, if we project that forward to sort of 2025, 2030 possibly, um, ICT is projected to consume 10% of the world's electricity. Um, so, you know, we have to have technology. We can forecast this massive growth in terms of data, compute, and everything else, we have to consider sustainability along with that because we can't allow it to continue to consume these vast resources without us taking proactive steps to, to, to be more sustainable in the approach. Companies talk about software as a service solution which can actually reduce an organization's you know, environmental impact. Is that true in today's uh, day and age? Yeah, I, th I think there's there's mixed results. I think you know if you look at the hyperscale providers, you know Amazon, Microsoft, Google, um, you know Alibaba, um, they're taking a very very proactive approach to being more sustainable in the way that they build, run, operate their, their data center environments. We're seeing similar from a lot of the software as a service companies as well. So. I think one step that companies can take to be more sustainable is to seriously consider cloud or software as a service um, as, as they look to the future, because I think it offers a lot of technology benefits, but I think it can also offer sustainability benefits as well. Okay. And um, uh, if you look at, the, you know, every year has different buzzwords, you know, when it comes to technology. And um, over the past year, we've seen net zero cloud being one of the buzzwords that companies use. Uh, do you think it can benefit organizations and how can it benefit organizations? Yeah, so I think we've got, what we've got to be careful of is that companies just saying net zero, net neutral, um, you know, there has to be a very clear science-based target or plan to back that up um, because it's easy to say we'll be carbon neutral by 2050. You know, there has to be a plan in place to back that up. But I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's important um, because, you know, I think there's a younger generation coming into the, the world. And as diversity and inclusion was a very, very important topic over the last few years and continues to be, I think there's a generation coming into our industry right now where sustainability is a very important topic. And I think companies that put that at the core of what they do, that, that consider that as a value to them, I think will also have better opportunities to attract and retain some of the younger generation of talent where that really is a core value to them. Okay, okay. And when it comes to sustainability, can it be a core driver for cloud innovation? I think, um, you know, again, just to give you some numbers, we, we think that if we look out over the next kind of four or five years, um, probably 40 to 50% of the data created in the world will live within the cloud. Um, so whether that happens from a sustainability reason which is a good reason. I think the more data we move into the cloud, it's more sustainable there than it is within most existing data centers. But what we've got to make sure is that if we put it there, let's do something with it. You know, the the, the figures I'm seeing recently are, you know, 68, 69% of data we create is never ever used again after it's created. But there's value in it. So I like to think that as we move more data to the cloud for sustainability reasons, that we can then start to use some of the advanced analytics, ML, AI capabilities of the cloud to look at that data and see if we can mine it and create new value, new opportunities from it. So with so many you know, positive aspects of moving to cloud and you know, uh, embracing green cloud, uh, how can companies transition themselves towards uh, this, uh, you know, uh, with, towards technology which is sustainable? So I think we've, we've made a lot of progress anyway. You know, the cloud, um, if you look at the numbers of companies that are either using one cloud or multiple clouds, it it's really has ex exploded in its use over the last two or three years. You know, one of the things we've been saying is people need to think about a data fabric. You know, that's this idea of making sure that you create a, a consistent platform that allows you to put your data where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, such that you can really exploit and gain value from it. Um, I think what, what we've got to do now is look at that data fabric where we said, you know, 
considerations, you know, freedom of choice, simplicity, protection, as you design your data fabric, you need to think about those as characteristics of it. I'd like to add a fourth, sustainability. Um, so as you think about your data fabric, which connects you to different cloud providers, I think one of the things you should say is, well, which one of those is going to offer us the most sustainable approach? Because there are still differences. Okay. So when it comes to driving the key messaging about technologies which are sustainable, you know, how do you do that as NetApp to your channel partners and customers? So, so I'm looking at it from three aspects. Um, the first one is you have to look at it as, as you, how do you operate as a company? You know, you can't just greenwash and try and sell people green solutions um, unless you, you practice what you preach. Um, so we're in the process of setting science-based targets for exactly how we want to operate as a business. We're increasing our renewable energy. Um, we're, we've built a solar plant in Bangalore. We have another one in Wichita coming online. So you've got the first part, which is practice what you preach. The second part is you need to be efficient within the products that you sell. So we have projects to look at how do we make the physical technology that we sell more sustainable, more environmentally friendly, less energy consuming. And then the, the third part is then how do you use your technologies to help your customers become more sustainable in the way that they work? Um, and there's a lot that we've been doing with, you know, connecting people to the clouds, data analytics to help understand what data is where and make better decisions about it. You know, cloud analytics with cloud insights. So there's a, there's a lot that we can do, but I think you've got to balance it across all three areas because this is kind of three pillars or three legs of the, uh, of the, the same stool. And if you don't have all three, it, it doesn't, I don't think it works well. Uh, that's all I need to ask. Uh, thank you, Matt, for speaking to us in, uh, today. And uh, we hope to speak to you again in the future, maybe in face-to-face. -face. Chris, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.